Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today, we're going to look at the studio releases from one of my favorite American bands, Grand Funk Railroad. Big fan of this band. Have been for a long, long time. I just always love the kind of kind of down home garage rock funky heavy rock music that these guys have always done you know they went through kind of certain periods in their in their in the span of their career you know early on a pretty heavy band all right balls out rock and roll with a little funk edge then they sort of got more commercial put out a bunch of you know pop hits still had that kind of hard rock edge uh, and then you know by the early 80s uh released a couple hard hard rock albums that really weren't big sellers at all and then boop, kind of disappeared uh, but, of course, they've been out on the concert trail uh, without Mark Farner for a long, long time. And uh, But a great discography, one that I like quite a bit. So you know how, you know the drill. I'm going to kind of go through their albums from my least favorite to my absolute favorite. I will say I like all these albums. Obviously, some a lot more than others. But even the ones that are at the bottom of the list, I still really enjoy quite a bit. So, you know, kind of tough. The bottom half, kind of tough for me to kind of... Uh, to rank here because I do appreciate all of them, although some are you know a bit better than others. But uh, they all have merits. If you haven't heard the later ones, I do recommend them if you can find them. I know the last two are kind of hard to track down on CD anyway, but uh, worth getting. All right, and uh, you know the the goal of the show is uh, I'll give you my rankings. Would like you guys to do the same down in the comments section. All right, list your favorites and why, your least favorites and why. Uh, it's all about talking about the albums of Grand Funk Railroad. If you don't like Grand Funk Railroad, well, then move on and go check out another video, right? So uh, anyway, let's start off. So my least favorite at the bottom of the of the barrel is uh, the What's Funk album from uh, 1983. This is the last studio album they've done. A decent album. Uh, I do like it. Uh, it's... You know, the, the problem with the last two that they really put out did not, you know, the, these, these guys always had a very, uh, a way of putting together very memorable songs, whether they were hard rock songs or more funky pop songs or whatever it might be. Uh, I find the last two kind of lack those really memorable melodies, but they're still enjoyable. They still kind of rock hard. Uh, there's some good songs on here. Rock and Roll American Style uh, is a good tune. Innocent, I like Borderline. El Salvador is a great song. So, you know, there, there's some there's some really decent stuff on here that I do recommend. But it's probably, out of all of them, it's my least favorite. Uh, next up, I'm going to go with the Grand Funk Lives album. Or Grand Funk Lives, however you want to say it. Uh, again, this has got a uh, little bit of a different lineup, okay? Uh, and then they finished off with the with the original uh, four-piece. But uh, here we've got uh, Queen Bee, actually a very good tune, which also appeared on the Heavy Metal soundtrack, if I remember correctly. Uh, Testify is a great time. Good, uh, great time. Good song. Good times. Another strong one. All right. Uh, what's this? Greed of Man. That's the one I was thinking of. Another very strong track. A couple covers. A fun album, okay? Uh, you know, at a time when the band, you know, their popularity had waned quite a bit by then, but still putting out halfway decent uh, albums. All right, next up, I'm going to go with Born to Die. Now, I know this this album and the next one I'm going to talk about uh, tend to get a little bit of shit from longtime Grand Funk Railroad fans. And, you know, and I kind of get it because I think this and the one I'm going to go uh, over next you know, much more commercial sounding. Uh, they did have their share of radio hits back in the day. I think the band was just kind of going, you know, again, their sales starting to wane a little bit, but still pumping out some some radio hits. And I, I actually, I like these albums. You know, I, we got, uh, you know, the title track, Born to Die. Uh, Dues is a great song. That's a really good kind of moody rocker. Sally, it's kind of a catchy pop tune. All right, uh, what else we got? Talk to the People is strong. Take Me, another kind of poppy but good rock song. Uh, Love is Dying, Politician. You know, I enjoyed this album. I, I didn't early on. I remember when I first started getting into Grand Funk Railroad all those years ago, I kind of was like this album and the one coming up next, I was kind of like, eh, not really that into it. As I've gotten older, I've gotten to appreciate it because it's, it's a good mix of kind of like pop tunes and, and rock songs. I like it. All right, next up, we've got All the Girls in the World, Beware. One of the worst covers of all time. I agree with you there. But actually not a bad record. Not a bad record. Again, filled with kind of hits. You know, bad bad times, some kind of wonderful. You know, the band was cranking out those AM radio staples way back in the day. 
uh, what a responsibility. It's just so damn catchy, kind of silly, but uh, you know what else? Running, uh, just uh, and the title track. I love the title track. That's a really good kind of funky rocker. So I, you know, I dig this out. It's fun. It, it's enjoyable. All right, next up, we're gonna go to good singing, good playing, produced by none other than Frank Zappa himself. This was probably the last uh, Grand Funk Railroad album to actually kind of chart. All right. Uh, and this was the last one of the 70s. But I think it's a pretty strong album. Just Couldn't Wait. Uh, Rubberneck. Killer tune. Going for the Pastor. 1976. Miss My Baby's kind of a fun song. Don't Let Him Take Your Gun. Pass it around, big buns. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just, a, it's a, it's a good, raunchy, grand funk album. I think a little more of a hard rock record than the two that came before it. Uh, but I dug it. But it just, you know, a little bit of fanfare, and then it kind of sank without a trace. And that was kind of the career of grand funk uh, from a like <clears throat> recording standpoint, or you know, mass acceptance uh, on their recorded releases. All right, next up, I'm gonna go with uh, Phoenix. For me, this was kind of like a transition album. So this is when uh, Craig Frost, keyboard player, joined the band. Uh, you can tell the kind of shift in style from this album and everything that came before it. This this was kind of the album that started them on a little bit of a different path, more from a kind of power trio, hard rock trio, to more of a band that now added keyboards, had more melodic elements, trying to have a kind of glossier sound, uh, looking for some mainstream you know, radio acceptance or what have you. But a solid album, okay? Flight of the Phoenix, Someone, You Got to Move Me, Rain Keeps Falling. I, you know, my problem, th- this, is, this is one of those albums for me, that I always enjoy when I listen to. It's a very solid record. I find, though, that this album, for me anyway, doesn't have a lot of like absolute standout memorable tracks. It's good taken as a whole, but there's really like no like kick-ass song on here, or there's no like can't miss, you know, radio staple with a you know, can't miss hooker melody. But on the whole, it's very, very solid. So again, a good a good uh you know, again, I'm having a hard time explaining it, and I've always had that issue with this album. I have always, whether I'm listening to it and trying to decipher it, or whether I'm talking about it, uh, the Phoenix album has always been kind of like that weird anomaly in their catalog. That just like it's just, you know, you like it, you know, it's good, but why is it good? I, I don't know. It is though. All right, we'll just leave it at that. Maybe some of you know what I'm talking about here. All right, uh, next up, kind of on similar similar things, uh, survival. A good album. <laughs> I love the album cover, right? You guys doing their caveman thing. Uh, kind of short and too many cover tunes for me. But the original stuff is kick ass. Country Road is a great song. Uh, All You Got Is Money. Absolutely love that song. For me, it's the best song of the album. That almost could have been on an, on the E Pluribus Funk album. That's how much, uh, you know, you got Comfort Me and you got their, their remake of Feeling All Right. They got a remake of Gimme Shelter. Both done very well, I might add. Uh, I would have liked to hear more original material, but, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, I Want Freedom. Again, this period in Grand Funk's career, a lot of their lyrics have to do with, you know, the anti Vietnam War stuff and what's going on in the White House and all that sort of thing. Uh, they were very into into all that. And, you know, kind of a sign of the times, you know, late 60s, early 70s. That's what it was all about. All right, next up, I'm I'm a big fan of this album, Shining On. Their kind of sequel to The Locomotion. Not The Locomotion. We're an American band. Sorry. <laughs> their, secret, their sequel to uh, We're an American band, and I think a very, very good one. It's got The Locomotion on it. That's what I was thinking. See, when you're thinking about too many things, got too much going on in the brain, you tend to just spit out stuff. It doesn't work that way. Uh, the title track, Shining On, very, very good. Uh, to Get Back In, good kind of catchy rock song i dig their cover of the locomotion you know, i love that kind of splatter guitar solo from mark farner and that uh carry me through is strong mr pretty boy getting over you little johnny hooker uh great sounding record 
Okay, and uh, a lot of really good strong tunes. It's still pretty damn rocking, but still has that kind of commercial side to it. And we got uh, next up, I'm going to go with uh, We're an American Band. Okay, you know, you got Todd Rundgren working with the band this this time period. Uh, this is the kind of album that, you know, they were always kind of a big band anyway, but this is the album that made them uh, an even bigger phenomenon. This is the album that got the critics sort of on their side because the critics absolutely hated them beforehand. And I think this album just works. You know, you've also got um, Mark Farner generally sang most of their uh, tracks early on, but here you got most of the guys in the band uh, Don Brewer specifically uh, behind the drum kit who's also singing lead vocals as well so and you would see that going forward on all their albums but you know we're an American band the uh, title track perennial hit single classic rock radio staple great song uh, stop looking back creeping absolutely killer song black licorice real rampaging heavy fast paced heavy rock song uh, the working on the railroad another great song um what else? You got Walks Like a Man, a Walk Like a Man, I should say, another kind of hit from the band. Loneliest, loneliest Rider. A, top to bottom, very, very solid, enjoyable album. Hard rock, but, you know, got like a, a bit of a, you know, kind of a accessibility to it, which the, the first time the band really had that fully. Uh, and they would, of course, explore that throughout the rest of their catalog. All right, next up, I'm going to go with On Time, the debut. It's bluesy. It's kind of raucous. It's uh, it's a long album. I, how this wasn't a double album at the time, I don't know. Because man, it's like all the songs are pretty lengthy on here, uh, and a just a good kind of. And it's it's not a very happy album. Like happy meaning again, you know, the lyrical content again, height of the Vietnam War. The lyrical content is kind of on the dark side. The songs are also very serious. Uh, this is before the band would start doing a lot of really kind of up-tempo stuff and what have you. But, uh, you know, Are You Ready, Time Machine, T-N-U-C, High on a Horse, Into the Sun. Love that song. What a great riff in that song. Heartbreaker, another great song. So it just excellent songs, top to bottom. I still think that the band were just, you know, at this point, very basic fine in their way i think the the couple albums that came after they really started to kind of break out of that early mold and you know become this band that started doing lots of different styles and flavors and things like that but a very good bluesy heavy rock album from you know very early in the infancy of what we know as heavy rock okay all right next up closer to home fine fine record here you know, it's got one of the best album openers of all time in Sin's A Good Man's Brother. That is a kick-ass, blistering barn burner of a track with some bulbous bass from Mel and some screeching guitar from Mark Farner. All right, just a really good, heavy song. Always loved it. Uh, Aimless Lady, Nothing Is The Same. Mean Mistreater, kind of a mellow track with some cool electric piano. All right. Uh, get It Together, more of like a kind of like melancholy bluesy rocker. Uh, I Don't Have to Sing the Blues, Hooked on Love, and of course the epic perennial favorite for most folks who listen to Grand Funk Railroad, whether you're a casual fan or a loyal fan, I'm Your Captain, all right? Kind of Grand Funk Railroad, Stay Away to Heaven, so to speak. Uh, a, great, a great tune, a FM radio staple, classic rock radio. Good song, finishing up a very, very strong album. All right, next up, um, coming in number two, E Pluribus Funk. I love this album. I love the kind of raucous, groove-laden nature of this album. There's you know, Mark Farner ripping on plenty of cool wah-wah guitars and funky licks, but it's still heavy. Uh, again, this is the kind of at the height of their lyrical perspective of really coming down hard on the, the Vietnam War and really kind of speaking, trying to speak for the people, speak for the kids of this country who are having to deal with kind of everything that's going on. So uh, a pretty heavy album lyrically as well as musically. Uh, kicks off with foot stomping music, which I think for me is the first song where they really utilized the funk in their band name. All right, I think Foot Stomping Music is an absolute relentless juggernaut of just 
funky hard rock groove. And I absolutely love it. I love the Hammond organ in it. I love the guitar solo in it. It's just a killer, killer song. Uh, People, Let's Stop the War. I mean, the bass, those wah-wah guitar licks, man. I love the chorus. It's just a driving, great heavy rock tune. Okay? And again, lyrics speak for themselves. Uh, Upsetter. That's also got a lot of groove, upbeat, hard rock tune. Uh, I Come Tumbling. Kills. Just, uh, you know, say what you want about Mark Farner as a guitar player. I know there's a lot of people who've always ripped on him over the years. I always, you know, he's he's just a raw, primal, in-your-face type of guitar player. He maybe is not the best technician that ever played in rock and roll, obviously. But I love his kind of on-the-edge at times bordering on sloppy, just screeching, screaming, playing. And I think uh, I Come Tumbling has some of the best stuff from him. I love that kind of the, kind of acrobatic riff on there. Uh, and it's just the rhythm's just kind of pumping away. Totally dig that song. Save the Land, another good kind of groovy hard rock piece. All right, No Lies and Loneliness, which for me is almost kind of like the sequel to I'm Your Captain, except a little more melancholy. Okay, it's got like the strings going on. And it's, it's this very, very cool, lengthy piece. All right, coming at number one for me, no surprise, uh, I'm going to go with the self-titled, well, the Grand Funk record, or the Red Album, as people call it. Uh, You know, this, I I might actually, because I I sat there and I thought about it, I'm like, you know what, E Pluribus Funk, for me, I think, top to bottom, I enjoy more, but there's some classics on here that are among my favorite Grand Funk songs of all time, and I had to put this at number one. This was always, for many, many years, this is always either my number one or my number two. Uh, I'm going to go with a number one here because I think there's a couple songs on here that are just like, for me, absolutely legendary. Uh, and it's got to it's gotta be up there. Okay, got this thing on the move. Another killer opening track. Love it. Sets the stage. Uh, please don't worry. Another good kind of moody, bluesy kind of rock tune. All right. Highfalutin Woman. All right. Love it. Love it. Mr. Limousine Driver, another kind of bluesy, cool rock song. In Need, great tune. Great tune. Uh, what else? Winter in My Soul, strong. That's the last two tracks, though. That It's the first track and the last two that just absolutely blow me away. You got Paranoid. No, not the Black Sabbath song. A just haunting, chilling, heavy song. All right. Again, lyrics. Just got to read the lyrics, man. It's all about what was going on at the time. Uh, and with that just ridiculously fuzz-driven guitar riff, man. It's killer. And then their remake of the Eric Burden classic, Inside Looking Out, which, for my money, way better than the original. And these guys live, if you, if you ever listen to their uh, their Grand Funk live album or even this live album, or you know they always played it live. Uh, absolutely killer with some just amazing guitar licks from Mark Farner band just jamming away it's hard it's heavy uh inside looking out absolutely love it one of the greatest cover songs of all time in my opinion uh done so successfully and just basically uh caps off this album in fine fashion so there you have it grand funk railroad my least favorite to my favorite okay ranking the studio albums uh again these are just the studio albums not the live records they do have a couple of them which are all very very good i might add uh let's recap all right so starting at number one i'm going to go with grand funk the red album number two e pluribus funk number three stop sliding off closer to home number four on time number five we're an american band Number six, shining on. Number seven, survival. Number eight, the phoenix. Number nine, good singing, good playing, produced by Mr. Zappa. Number 10, all the girls in the world beware. Number 11, born to die. Number 12, grand funk lives or lives or lives. Number 12, 
What's Funk? Did I get the numbers right there, people? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I, I messed up the numbers again. How do I do that all the time? So I, I, it's like I'm counting backwards. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I covered them all. So anyway, that's uh, there you have it. Ranking the studio albums for Grand Funk Railroad. Remember, in the comments below, list your favorite albums and tell us why, right? Let's get into some discussions here about what we love about Grand Funk Railroad or maybe what we don't like so much about Grand Funk Railroad. But if you don't like them, don't just say these guys suck. You know, Just uh, tell us why you don't like them, all right? That's, I wish some more people would do that. I, I, we get so many people who just kind of visit some of these videos and they're like, you know, and all that, like, I hate this band. They suck. Great. You want to tell us why? All right. You can't inject some level of creativity there, right? Bring something to the channel other than just, you know, rent, venting your distaste for a band or genre. It's like the people who are like, oh, I don't, I don't like progressive rock. I don't like this band. I only like metal. Or, you know, you got the some of the prog guys who are like, oh, I hate metal. I hate extreme metal. It sucks. But what, what, what don't you like about it? You know, open open your ears a little bit. Give it a chance. Instead of just coming on here and venting, all right, that's something, you know, I mean, obviously, not every video is going to appeal to every single viewer, all right? The responsible and adult thing to do is if you see a video of mine posting that's about a band or a genre that you're really not into, just don't watch it. Just c coming on and popping in a comment about, you know, oh, this sucks, I'm not into this, whatever. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's just, that's not bringing anything to the table here at all, all right, other than your, your frustration that, you know, maybe I've done something about a band or a genre that you don't really like. I, I pump out plenty of videos, all right? Not all of them are going to appeal to everybody. If you see something you like, then you watch it. And then hopefully you offer some kind of cool comments, all right? But just coming in and saying you don't like something. Please, all right? Come on. Let's, let's all let's grow up here a little bit. Anyway, guys, this is on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're on the Mighty YouTube all the damn time. What do we got coming up this weekend? Uh, I don't quite know yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to pump out uh, another one or two of these things over the weekend. Uh, I do want to do the Who uh, kind of coming up soon. Uh, I was going to do ELP this weekend, but then I realized that uh, there's one of their later CDs that I've never gotten, although I've had it on cassette back in the day, so I need to get that. So I'm going to have to hold off on the ELP for a little bit. It's in the hot seat. Uh, and um, what else? Uh, I'm, I don't know. Uh, oh, Queen. I'm going to do Queen this weekend. That, that's absolutely going to happen. So uh, Queen will probably be at some point tomorrow morning, hopefully. All right. So uh, stay tuned. All right, guys. We'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.